have I got an awesome project for you. That's right, it is a super simple art quilt, but we're gonna build a basic foundation using half square triangles, easy pattern applique, and then super fun fussy cut with your very favorite floral fabrics. I mean, does it get any better than that? That's right, everybody. I am Rob Appel from Michael Miller Fabrics, and welcome to another fantastic tutorial at Making It Fun, where that's the whole goal is everything we make is we make it fun. And of course, I'm using beautiful Michael Miller Fabrics today to create this fantastic uh, wall quilt. As I said, it's super simple, basic patchwork, basic applique, but I'm gonna walk you all through the steps. Easy, easy. Now, you've seen me playing with the Michael Miller Digital Print Paradiso before, but this stuff is absolutely Absolutely gorgeous and we're gonna use oh gosh a half of a yard or so with about a yard worth of the heat and bond feather light fusible web we'll put that on the back for our fussy cut applique no problem the vase itself all of the solids are always going to be the cotton couture because I love the way they applique and I love the way the machine quilt it's a high density solid from Michael Miller and I have a fancy and pastel here for the purples see these are the ones I'm using in the vase to hold the bouquet and then let me see if I've learned my colors a moon uh, a lot celadon and wind are the colors that are used as the background. So minimum of a third, better to have a half of a yard of each of those cut down into five inch squares for your background uh, half square triangles. And Sweet Lily was my secret surprise. That was the one once everything was built, I was able to go back in, put together for the perfect binding. And the binding is such a key ingredient in the quilts. Not only does it keep the edges secure, but obviously it brings that last little bit of color in that does so many different things. So today's concept was really to build a neutralized background that had a little bit of character, do all kinds of really fun fussy cut applique, raw edge applique, because one of my requests I had was, how do you free motion around the edge of the raw edge applique? Well, that's also in today's video. Let's start right now in the video with making those half square triangles. Now you can make any size half square triangles you want for this project, of course. I'm gonna make everything out of five inch to start and I'm gonna use the old method where I go around all four sides and then cut them on the diagonal. So I'm cut up all four colors into five inch squares and then I just mixed and match and mixed and match but I did end up by making two strips five inches wide. Uh, I was able to get eight squares per color. So I have on the table now 30. These are the leftovers to make a total of 32 squares. Lots of math, not that that's important. I'm just gonna choose two colors. You're gonna have combinations of all the colors so it won't matter which ones you choose. I did equal parts of everything so I can mix and match as we go down the road. Now I've got an edge guide on here and I've got a quarter inch uh, presser foot going. Now I'm gonna go ahead and I'm just gonna to start to stitch around this edge and I'm just holding my seam allowance nice. And I'm gonna sew all the way off the corner. I'm gonna rotate with my needle in the down position and I kind of have an opposite idea. I like to kind of hang onto this opposite corner down here with my left hand as well. And that kind of helps things glide through and will help prevent a little bit of a pucker at the end. Always a good idea to check your corners as you're rotating. We're gonna go ahead and stitch that right on through like that. And then the last side here. Next thing I like to do is I like to take my rotary cutter and I'm just gonna do what we call dog earring or trimming off the corners. And this is just gonna help for bulk seam allowance management later on. And I'm just gonna point out here, I did not cut through those threads. Those crosses on the threads are gonna be important. And now I'm just gonna go ahead and take any old straight edge, as long as it's long enough. I'm gonna take, and I've laid it between the, where those threads crossed. And I'm gonna cut across here. And I'm gonna go ahead and don't move your fabric, just move your ruler, line it back up and go ahead and cut through there. If you have an efficient Susan that you would like to use, go ahead and use that right now. It would be the perfect option. We're pressing to the dark side, so I'm holding my dark edge up in the air of these ones. And I'm gonna do them all the same because as we get ready to match up those half square triangles, we're gonna make basically a 
broken dish design today, what we want to do is we want to make sure we keep all of these the same. So I kind of make a habit for myself that just says light to the right so I can always kind of remember in my mind, especially because I won't tell you how late at night it is right now while I'm filming this. And I want to make little teepees in my brain right now, I'm calling this green my light. So I'm going to make a bunch of these all facing the exact same direction like this. So let's go ahead and go to the machine and I'm going to match up those two points there. And at this point, if you also are into chain piecing, you can certainly chain piece. That's why I point out that it's lights to the rights, and you're always going to be going ahead and looking at these TP shapes. And it actually will be easier if you do chain piece. And this way you can always see that your blocks are the, the same as the rest of the blocks as you chain piece through. And now I'm going to go ahead and press again. Same direction, both blocks. Should be pressing to the dark side there. And then what we're going to go ahead and do, and that's just a little water. We don't need to worry about that. We're going to match these up like this. So the whole concept in the background was that I would have these beautiful kind of neutral patchwork that won't really be noticed at first because of the brightness of the floral applique. Now, I've lined up my seams at the top. I lined up my center seams, or we call that nesting. That's why it's important to have them press going in the opposite directions like that. And then once I get past that center seam, I just take a moment, make sure I have the last edge seam lined up as well. We've got a little bit of flexor given the bias now, the way we've made these, which is a total advantage in my opinion, so that as I come back over here, I can press this block open. And I like to use a bit of steam when I'm just doing my basic patchwork like that. And you can see here that those points are pretty dang matched up and it's not a high, high contrast block. You can see all of my colors on the table here are fairly neutralized. So I'm gonna make a bunch of these half square triangles. I'm gonna throw them on the design wall over here. Now that I got everything laid out on the design wall and I checked and checked and checked to try to make sure my colors got scrambled properly, I'm gonna go ahead and build block by block by block to go ahead and assemble rows. Now, there's a trick I like to do when I go to the design wall. These will be the first two pieces I sew together, so that means that this will be a seam, right? That'll be the next seam after I join those two. Then this will be a seam then this'll be a seam, then this'll be a seam. And I take all of those and I lay them facing right at the sewing machine so that I know that that's the side I'm sewing to. And then as I go back to the wall, I'm taking pieces or blocks, I should say two and block one, joining them here. And I make sure that as I go to the machine, I go ahead and I'm looking at block two so that as I begin to piece, these will flop outward. And just like before, you're just matching up your unions of your half square triangles. Remember, this was the seam. It goes on to the piece. So that should have been block three connecting to block two. Always just double checking that the colors I'm putting down here are not the same color. If they're the same color, that means you have a block out of order. Now the other good habit I often do while I'm piecing is I also pay attention to which way I'm pressing my seams when I'm building blocks and blocks into rows like this. So the last one I was basically pressing uh, down the ironing board or down the design wall. So now I'm going to be pressing up the design wall or starting on the last block. So on the next row, I'll start on the first block as I set that seam there. And do be careful, your other seams may be going in the opposite direction, so you're only pressing the seams that you just created, of course. 
Just a reminder, we've got all the blocks put together into rows. Now I'm gonna sew row by row by row together to build out the rest of the background. And it's pretty dang easy, but you always wanna make sure you're paying attention to your orientation. So again, as I come together, I'm gonna to take these two, and I always love to be looking at the second piece or the next piece as I go to the machine. So now as I get down here, I simply gonna match up the points where all the half square triangles line up. I have been back stitching at every union possible, but now I'm gonna definitely make sure. And now I'm just gonna simply keep my finger on each union of the half square triangles as I go. We're gonna get those lined up so nicely there. Setting the seam first. Now, I'm gonna set this here at the machine, come over here and I know that this is the top seam. I bring this over here. I'm gonna drop it right down, get myself aligned, go ahead and add on the third row. Keeping in mind, I always want the bulk of the project, I always want the most, whatever it is I'm working on, on the bed of the machines. The feed dogs are pulling them down and the new piece, the light piece, the add-on piece is just going for a ride on top of the bulk we've been working on. Toss those last two rows on, be right back and we're gonna start that applique. And as you can see, I've gone ahead and traced out my shapes I need for my vase and for my shadow. Now I want my shadow on the other side, so I have flipped it over. Um, and basically I just created the piece by marking out the size I needed. I chose to have 15 inches tall, nine inches wide. I folded my paper in half so that I could have a fairly symmetrical piece. Um, I am trying to say that I want this piece on the other side because it's fusible web that has a paper back. It means things are gonna be flipped and opposite. So I actually took a moment and flipped that over before I did the tracing for my shadow piece. I've labeled them. So I'm gonna grab this here, my dark fabric. And I'm gonna go ahead and position this just kinda over here on the edge so that I'm not wasting any. And then with the heat and bond feather light, we just need a couple of seconds to bond it. And I can actually see and or touch. Ooh, that's getting a little hot, the way that's working. Okay, so we're gonna let that cool. So here's my light fabric. And again, just kind of sliding it down near the selvage edge so that I'm maximizing what I have left over. Okay, now that those pieces are starting to cool. I wanna trim away so that I'm not worrying about making any damage to my wonderful fabric left over here. Now, to cut something like this, this is exactly why I invented my little mini rotary cutting tool, the 14 millimeter shark. So I can start anywhere, uh, hold it like a pen. If you've never seen any of my ever there information, just hold it like a pen. And I'm gonna set this on the line and I've created my own shape, so I know that this is freestyle. But if you were tracing from a pattern, you would want to know if your line is part of the pattern. If you want to add a little extra uh, insurance or wiggle room, one of the things you can certainly do is actually draw a little wide and then cut a little wide. And that will ensure that you always have just a little bit of extra fabric, because we do want them to overlap so that when we get into the machine stitching process, we're only stitching down one layer. We're not stitching them down right next to each other. I'm stitching on the top layer. Oh, this is gonna get fun. <laughs> now, I am just certainly arranging the fabric now to make it so it's easy to cut. And also, let me point this out. Watch what I'm actually doing with my left hand. The left hand is actually driving the fabric as I push the cutter with my right hand still holding it like a pen. Now, I know this is the top piece, so I wanna to cut to the outside of the line if possible, making it just slightly larger than the underlie piece. That way, if I hadn't drawn it or cut it perfectly, I have a little overlap. See how much easier it corners when you use both hands together? 
And as I come into this intricate stuff here, I can either, with experience, nibble away at it. So in, turn tight, lift a little, back around. Easy. Or you could have always cut wide and come back in and scissor trimmed. You know, you could come back in and take care of any of that or any time you want to move that stuff out of the way so that it's not working against you or so that you can rotate. This is why I wanted to cut applique with a rotary cutter. So you saw I just actually switched to the other side of the shape with ease. Or if I was doing that with a scissor, for me, sometimes that's a little harder to see. Perfect, cut nicely, and of course you can always pick up the rotary cutter at robappel.com. Advertising over, let's move back into the applique. And to do that, what I really want to do is I want to provide a nice, flat, heat-ready surface. So these big ironing boards that we have are awesome because now with something like this, I can go ahead and grab my quilt top off the design wall. Of course, if your top was bigger than much bigger than the board, that would be a problem. But right now, I know that I don't want my vase right on the edge. I know I'm not going to change the shape of my vase. So I'm going to go ahead and now start to peel the paper off. I'm grabbing at one of the edges, one of the corners, and as I start to peel slowly, I can make sure that the gloss is transferred from the paper onto the fabric, meaning the glue is exactly where I want it. And now I'm going to go ahead and just Peel this off here, and now I want to drop it into position somewhere within my background. Now it's a patchwork background, and I will cover up a lot of the top of the vase, but I don't want it right on any lines necessarily. So there, I think that looks pretty good for now. Like I said, I want it kind of offset. How about that? That way it kind of covers there. Now that that's down, I'm going to take in my shadow piece. Now I'm going to line this up, making sure that I cover this outside edge because I'm not going to have any of the flowers come down around. As we think about our applique pieces, I mentioned earlier that I really don't want you to peel any of the paper off any of your leaves or your flowers or your petals because you may need to trim them down. You may need to redesign them. So I'm going to go ahead and kind of start to dry fit this and just play a little bit. I have a vision of my green leaves around the base here and then a floral explosion up here. So therefore, to make my life easy, I want to start stacking in some of what will probably be my underlaying layers first. Now, you might be thinking through this thinking, gosh, Rob, then I have to go back and peel all that paper off. I know, but you're also playing a trick on your mind. You're dry fitting this now, telling your brain it's okay. You have everything where you want it, so you won't go back second guessing it thinking, oh, if I only, you know what I'm trying to say? So what I want you to do is just play for a little bit. I'm taking a moment with my eyes and I'm just looking to make sure as I fill in the gaps, I am starting to make sure that all of the beautiful edges are showing and these not so pretty edges will be hidden under other applique pieces. You don't have to use every piece either. Don't drive yourself nuts trying to get there. Uh, something like this piece here, it, uh, it was cut out of the print, so it has more to the left side of the flower than the right. So I'm going to start to position something like that over here on to the left side of the bouquet. It's also a good idea if you have some of your favorite or big key pieces that you're going to want to play with and make sure you get your color out where you want it. You may want to set them now into the project at a distance so you kind of have an idea of where you have to build out towards. If that makes some sense, hopefully. You want to balance your colors. So I want to keep everything going as I can. You know, a little blue here, a little blue there, a little pink here, a little pink there. Of course, also working to put the flowers so there'd be some over, some under each other. I've also cut some of these little dark green pieces to kind of float in here behind spaces 
because I think that that's gonna actually give some body. See what that does over there? Hopefully you can see it. Okay, and we're gonna darken up around the outside edges a little bit. I've got a little more. Stand back, take the old director view, right? Now that I can see everything fits beautifully in here, I am going to take the time and start working the paper off of these pieces, putting it back together as I go, and I wanna take them off one at a time. And I'm gonna then kind of position it back where it came from, and then I'll go to the next piece here. I love to have a stiletto or a tweezer handy because remember that piece was just slightly under this piece. So I'm gonna work these leaves out. Once all the paper is off, that's the best time to take some maybe photographs of it, look at it from a distance, evaluate it, let it rest. Paper's out, project is beautiful. I've got a few pieces left over. We're not gonna worry about those right now. So I'm gonna grab Sherman, my big tank iron, my super hot, you can see he's been on a couple of times overnight. He's pretty dirty. Nonetheless, and you may wanna cover yours with a presser sheet as well. Something like this to just kind of keep it uh, from moving. But what I wanna point out, we're gonna start in the middle and I'm gonna press down and I'm gonna lift. It's about a three second heat time and I just saw a little piece move and expose a little of the background. So I fixed that while I was here. And now I'm gonna radiate outward. Please resist over ironing. If you over press this, your applique pieces won't hold and then they'll start to come up while we do our free motion machine quilting. And we don't want that to happen at all. All pressed down. While I let that cool, I'm gonna prepare my backing and my batting. So I'm gonna make it larger than the sample I have here. This thing right now is about 27 inches, 27 and a half by about 33 and a half. So let's cut our background about 30 by 36. Same with our batting. And we're gonna go ahead and go safety pin basis and prepare it for the machine quilting process. Basting was a snap, obviously. Now we have our backing. We have our batting, as you can see, and our quilt top safety pinned all together. I just wanna point out again, let me bring this in nice and close here. There is no thread yet used, except for the patchwork of the background. I have not done any pre-stitching to this onto just the background. We're gonna go ahead now, we're gonna dive in here, and I've chosen a couple of different colors of variegated thread. A variegated thread, if you don't know, is the thread that kind of changes color as it goes. I'm gonna use green around the leaves. I'm gonna use kind of a multicolor pink, purple, orange, obviously, up around here in the flowers. Now you could pick a color and go blue around the blue, pink around the pink, but because I don't want to use monofilament, I believe that using thread is better than using the monofill because the thread fills in the holes. I'm choosing a thread that's going to camouflage versus being invisible. I have on the bed of my machine the So Slip mat, so it's an ice skating rink. It's a Teflon coating. I'm going to gear up with my wonderful Machine Gears gloves. You can get these probably in any local quilt shop. I absolutely love them. They come in a couple different sizes. So you wanna make sure they fit nice and snug because it's a nice breathable glove, but on the tip is a silicone and that silicone is gonna help our fingers grip. And funny enough, sometimes these small quilts are a little harder to move about because there's not as much to hang on to. Now, I want to start in the middle of my quilt project, so I'm just going to slide myself over, and we're going to start in the middle of the quilt and hopefully in the middle of the applique, and if all goes well, I will actually start up here on one of my larger surface pieces, the piece on top, because remember, we're just going to sew around the edges of the uppermost pieces, securing everything as we go. Now, if you've never done this before and you're first to it, this is really great. I'm glad you're here. We're gonna take a single stitch down and then back up to bring the bobbin thread up. I wanna to try to secure as much on the top. I have a short little thread, I can see it, but I'm not gonna be able to grab it, so I am just gonna anchor a couple stitches in place here to hold. And now I'm just gonna simply start to machine quilt following the edge of the raw edge applique and as soon as I get to a spot where I can trim out this thread that's, 
I don't want to be looking at it. I don't want to be sewing over it. I don't want it to get caught up in my stitches. So we can just pull this out of the way. Now, I also want to point out really quickly, I am using polyester thread today. I'm using polyester thread because one, this is not an heirloom project, and I'm going to be sewing through lots and lots of layers. And so the polyester thread is going to be stronger, more durable, and more forgiving if I don't sew perfectly. So now here we go. I'm going to go around the top of this one flower petal here. And if I want to come in and add some character detail, this will be the time to do it. Coming around the center. We're not going to be doing much doubling back in this project. You can if you need to. Okay, so now I'm where I started from. I have basically secured that entire flower. I'm in the middle of my project and I'm just going to start radiating out in one direction, trying to work my way back up from the center and then keep moving center out, center out, center out as I go. If you sew around the outside or machine quilt around the outside of any object first and then you come back in and you channel it in a little bit more, you will get extra loft because you're technically working from the outside in versus from the inside out. And it's a really effective and fun technique, especially when we're doing landscape projects and we want certain portions of our work to show up more than others. And I quilted up to about an inch away from this first safety pin here from the center. So now I'm going to go ahead and remove it. I'm going to get it out of the way so that as I head back towards it, one, it doesn't trap batting, creating a possible pucker. But I also don't ever want to stitch too close to safety pins because I just don't want to have to tear them out of my gears later on. Now that the bouquet is officially appliqued, it's time to finish out the vase. So still using the polyester thread, it's a variegated, it's a purple color. I'm gonna first run along the entire exterior of the vase, trying to create a bit of extra batting inside so that when I do a little of the additional machine quilting, it gives us some character. We'll see how that goes. So far, so good on the rest of the process. I've gotten a little start just so the needle was already uh, stitched down and the knots were trimmed. And again, just run on the outside edge. And as soon as I get over that seam, I want to come down here and pop this pin out early. This is a single layer of the fused raw edge applique. So stitching is butter. Now you see I just switched. Now I'm on the highlight piece now I'm going to point this out I'm rotating my project so that we can both see better what's going on I am not rotating the project while the needle is moving but you're always welcome to rotate your project needle down this is going to make it easier for me to see and actually keep a nice smooth line I hope along this edge. It's also important to have good start and stop points that I'm looking for. Now I'm just going to follow along the edge of that leaf there so that now 
depth. I'm on the other edge of that shadow highlight piece. And now we're going to start by stitching it down. This is going to not only accent that piece, but it's going to give a little fun extra texture to the vase itself or a little bit of loft to the vase itself. And we're going to see then what we want to do for a little extra character if any is necessary. Okay, then right back to that base piece. Lock these stitches in. I'm gonna bring the needle to the up position. I'm gonna hunt down my little scissors. Press her foot up, slide it slightly, pull up on the knot, snip that, and now I've cut the bobbin thread also free. Actually, I kind of like what it's done to the vase alone because we've already gone around the outside. Nothing's gonna change. So I'm gonna now go ahead and put in a neutral thread and machine quill through these um, half square triangles so that I don't exaggerate the background with a nice, like I said, neutral, maybe a cream color thread. Whamma, like this thread right here. It's another variegated thread and it's kind of a pinkish to yellowish to kind of greenish. Bingo! I'm gonna do stitch in the ditch on the diagonals to start with. So I'm finding the channel I wanna start in. I'm gonna go ahead and anchor that thread like I showed you. So stitch, 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 that's anchored now. And now we're just gonna do stitch in the ditch, free motion style. And because I'm doing stitches in the ditch, don't pull too much to open up the ditch because you'll exaggerate it and then you'll miss the ditch. I'm also just quilting now on the cotton couture with no fusible and it's just butter in there. Oh, that feels so nice. I'm gonna run this diagonal out all the way here. And now, because I've got all that applique in the middle, instead of coming back around the corner going back up, I'm gonna go back to the applique, come back down over and over working out of the applique. It's worth retying the threads, I guarantee it, because if I go back up, it might create a pucker. We don't want that. So, stitch in the ditch on the diagonals. If I decide to do any more, I'll let you know. If not, I'm gonna bind this thing after I trim it down and it'll be basically ready for me to start the beginning of the video. That seems kind of weird, doesn't it? <laughs> awesome, let's see how the stitch in the ditch goes. I'll be right back. Well, there it is, truly finished like I said, and look at what the binding does to bring all the colors together. I know, it's fantastic, and that was like secret sauce, a little special trick I had for you at the very end, the way it ignites all of that. So I'm very, very pleased with the way this turned out, and I certainly hope you enjoyed today's video. Now, like I said, I enjoyed the stitch in the ditch so much that I did the entire, um, all the directions, but I started in the diagonals, and then the verticals and the horizontals, and you can also see the awesome uh, detail of the raw edge applique, free motion machine quilting. So super, super fun project for those of you who are beginners out there. Yes, it's super achievable. I've got the easy video on how to make your half square triangles. That's a basic background. This was just fussy cutting around some real easy raw edge applique pre-fused fabric print, right? And a real simple pattern for the vase and anybody could make that shape so simply there. I certainly hope you like my new format of doing these videos and you saw me do part of this on the live video on Wednesday and then I've been running with cameras the last two days while working on the project to capture all the parts and pieces. So like I said, now that I've finished the project, I'm gonna go back and start the video all over again. I know that seems weird. We'll just keep the loop going so we're always making it fun. Wow, you made it to the end of the video. I'm so impressed. Thanks for doing that. Make sure you subscribe while you're here. Check out these other videos we've got for you. We'll see you next time right here at Making It Fun.